So today we're going to talk about why the ukulele is actually has some legs up on the guitar in some ways. Now, I want to preface this and say there's no one instrument that's better than others, right? Every instrument has different strengths and weaknesses. The reason for this video is because the ukulele is oftentimes thought of as just a weaker version of a guitar by some people because of its limitations of having less strings and less range. And truthfully, those are big negatives to the instrument compared to the guitar. That being said, the ukulele does have some things that it can do that the guitar can't, and today we're going to dive into those. To start, let's talk about some very basic things. Well, look how small this thing is. This is a tenor-sized ukulele. These are considered, you know, bigger ukuleles, and I fly all the time with my ukulele, and I put it in my little the overhead bin, and I don't stress about it. If you're learning to play an instrument and you pick guitar and you're wanting to do a lot of flying with that guitar, it's quite stressful, quite difficult to do. And even just walking around town somewhere, I've got a case that's a backpack for my ukulele and it's not even that big. A guitar, on the other hand, quite difficult to carry. So the portability is obviously a huge strength and not even one of the ones we're leaning in today, but makes it a lot easier to take you know, the instrument to the beach and make some music. Another big reason why I like the ukulele so much and one of the strengths it has to the guitar is it is easier to pick up and start learning. Now, is it easier to master the ukulele than the guitar? Absolutely not. No instrument's necessarily easier to master than any other. To play something at the top of the level requires effort no matter what instrument. But learning to pick up the ukulele and start playing immediately is I think objectively easier because you have to do a lot less. On a guitar to play your first song or whatever else, you usually have to use more than one finger, but on a ukulele, you can learn some chords with literally just one finger <laughs> and be off and on your journey. So that initial step is so much easier to start with. But these aren't even the reasons we're going to dive into today. What we're really going to dive into are three main reasons. The first one is for both high G and low G ukulele players. What that means is this top string here on my ukulele is a high G. It's a high pitch on some other people's ukuleles. It's a low G. This is just a preference thing for ukulele players. I prefer high G, but low G is awesome too. You can check out a video of high G versus low G in the description below. But whether you're playing high G or low G, you get the strength of four fingers or strings. You see, when you're learning to play guitar and playing the guitar, you don't necessarily have access to the entirety of the instrument because it contains six strings over a big range. And obviously those six strings give you much more tonal range than an ukulele has, but you're limited to kind of choosing which ones you're able to actually fret as you go through. On a guitar, you have to use a bar to be able to fret all six strings because you only have four fingers. But on an ukulele, we have a really unique opportunity to be able to fret all four strings simultaneously. And what this gives us is a unique flexibility with the instrument to play chords in ways that are very different. And we get these sort of situational chords that are just beautiful with this instrument that other instruments can struggle to kind of get. You know, for instance, if I'm going to play like a G chord like this, well, if I want to play it instead, like this. This is massive. Look at this G chord, right? Well, in this case, I'm only using three out of my four strings or three out of my four fingers, leaving the G string open, but I only need to worry about those four. I'm not worrying about two extra to make sure that they're playing the right notes. And that gives me the flexibility to play these really big, beautiful chord voicings. Now, a guitar can get a voicing as big and beautiful as this using its strings. However, when we're trying to play really exact chord melody arrangements and things like that, it's nice to know that you sort of have the control over all four strings as you're going through it. And there's never a time where I'm looking at it and thinking I have to mute a string because I can't fret it right, which is a common practice in the world of guitar because again, four fingers, four strings. It just kind of makes sense to have that sort of flexibility. It makes for learning jazz standards and chords really nice because you'll know that you're always going to be able to fret all four strings, even if each finger has a different responsibility. So that's one big strength to the ukulele over the guitar. Four fingers, four strings. The next one I'm gonna talk about is 
my favorite personally and that well one of two and the third one's also my favorite the second thing is that it is a strummer's dream so this is a little bit more unique to haiji ukulele and that is because on a guitar well yes guitarists strum all the time that's a big part of playing the guitar right the guitar has a very kind of linear sound when it's being strummed because of the tuning of the instrument because it always goes low to high in pitch your down strums always end with a higher sound and your up strums always end with a lower sound, right? Just objectively speaking. But with a high G ukulele, your top string here now is another high string, meaning you kind of have two high strings on the instrument. And what this does is it facilitates a very unique style of strumming that's quite unique to the ukulele. In fact, the closest thing it's similar to would be like a, a five-string banjo, but that's really more finger style, that, that claw hammer type of style, right? This is very unique to the ukulele. So I'm going to show you a little example of this. I'm going to use my fancy new camera to do this. So if I'm trying to strum something with the guitar, I'm usually going to be fixed to kind of down and ups. But with the ukulele and a high G string, I can now kind of use this as a bit of a drone to create this nice in-between sound. And if you want to check out more on this technique, which is called ghost note strumming, be sure to check out the course linked down below where we talk about how to create this sound. But there's a reason why Jake Shimabukuro's video of While My Guitar Gently Weeps went viral, and that's because of his high G. <laughs> because instead of strumming something like this, kind of how you would play something like this if you were playing on a guitar. These simple kind of down and up motions pulsating. You now get to add this thumb on the high G string. And so that my microphone doesn't clip, I'm going to scoot back just a little bit and you get this sort of sound. really, really rich, big sound that's actually coming from the limitation the instrument has. As I mentioned before, the guitar has a larger range, especially a high G ukulele, because this should be a low string and set its high. But that same high string that's a, a limitation in the range ends up being an absolutely massive assist to creating this dynamic strumming sound that really is unique to the ukulele. One of my favorite videos of all time is Jake Shimabukuro and Tommy Emanuel, who's a really incredible guitarist, playing While My Guitar Gently Weeps. The video is probably 12 years old now, or close to. It's, it's quite old, maybe even older than that. And it's so cool because you get to see two masters of their craft go at it and start strumming. And it, it's, it's really, really entertaining because Jake, when he's doing the single note solos, you know, it, it's not... A, what Tommy can do with the guitar and the range. But as soon as they start strumming and doing all of that, Jake just elevates it to this whole other level. And these are two of the best at their craft. And it really showcases how different these instruments are and how the ukulele can actually be, you know, a strumming instrument at an instrumental, you know, virtuosic level in a way that you don't usually see the guitar being played. And it's not to say the guitar can't be strummed really fast and crazy and all that. It's just when it does, it has a little bit more linear of a sound because again, it always strums down. It's going, when you do a down strum, it's going from low to high. And when you do an up strum, it's going high to low. But on ukulele, you kind of go to the high both times and just opens things up really cool sound. And this is what I use all the time when I'm playing, whether it's an original song, like something like this for a sound. Or something like the mentioned Gently Weeps. Or other Jake songs like Blue Rose is Falling. That 
high G gives you so much unique flexibility that guitarists really can only dream about because they don't have that same limitation that ends up opening up the sound immensely. Now, the third thing that we're going to look at with the ukulele as sort of a strength also leans into that high G. The high G is what I think makes the ukulele very unique. If you're playing a low G style ukulele, you, you're playing more similarly to a guitar. And there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I love low G. I love playing low G. But there's something about high G that makes it so unique. And that big weakness of having the high G string ends up being a huge positive for when we're doing things that other instruments simply can't. And with this concept, we're going to talk about campanella. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but please let me know if I'm not. I need to work on my Italian. Campanella is Italian for bell-like. And what bell-like means musically is if you've ever heard bells being played as instruments, they will ring the note and they will continue ringing. And the next note will be played, but that first bell, it keeps ringing. And usually there's a row of people all holding two bells, right? Doing different responsibilities. And they'll create the sound where everything just keeps ringing into each other. This note will ring into this note, will ring into the next one and so on. I also like to think of a harp. When a harp plays, it's got all of the individual strings. So each string can kind of be plucked and it creates this really dynamic sound of continued resonance. Now, Logically, a guitar should be better at this than an ukulele, right? It has six strings. So we could have all six strings ringing at the same time, right? And yeah, you could. But because the strings have such a variation of pitch going through from the low to high, it's very difficult to map a melody of notes that are very close together on the guitar where every note rings out. Most commonly when you're playing a guitar and you're playing something like this here, you're going to see it played like this. And that's because it's a linear way to play a linear line on a linear instrument. And by linear, I just mean I'm moving from a high string to a low one. However, on a high G ukulele, I can utilize the G string as that sort of second melody string to station those melody notes in different ways. So this same line here, I can play something like this. And what you'll notice is when I play it this way, I can let these notes ring into each other in a way that's very unique. And I can play it really fast and clean because I'm never doubling up on one string. And that's really what the root of this technique is. I'm trying to play every note sequentially on a different string. The first note, A string. Second note, G string. Third note, E string. Next note, A string. Next note, G string. Next note, C string. Next note, E string. Next note, C string. You'll notice I never play the same string twice in a row when I do this. Now, if I play it this way, you'll see I'm playing A, 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 E, 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 C, C. And this is more how a guitarist would approach this. And on an ukulele, especially with high G, you get this unique opportunity for this campanella-like effect. Now this little run is a good example, but it really starts to shine when you start to play some different classical music, right? One of my favorite examples of this is uh, playing some Bach. And there's a beautiful arrangement done by a guy named John King. Um, now if I play just a little bit of this arrangement in, with linear tuning in mind, it might sound like this. And this is not even full linear because I'm actually using multiple strings in multiple positions, right? I'm playing my C, E, and my A. So that's how a guitar would do it, still with a little bit of campanella effect, right? Because I'm actually playing C, E, those keep ringing, then A, 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 but then E, A, E. So it still has a little bit of that campanella, right? It sounds pretty nice. But when you play a high G ukulele, you get an even bigger advantage to playing melodies like this. Instead of this melody being here, all on the A string, I'm going to put it here on the G and the A. And now I can play something more like... And 
And this creates this absolutely incredible cascading effect of tone that's, again, so unique to the ukulele. And again, that, that was John King's arrangement. Um, and so definitely check out John King, uh, one of the greatest ukulele players that ever walked this earth. And he played a Sopranino itty bitty ukulele and would play these massive classical pieces of music, mapping it out with that Campanella style so that those melody notes can ring out in a bunch of different ways. And I believe he's also a classically trained guitarist, and yet he kind of chose the ukulele as his main instrument. And I don't know why, I wish I could ask him, but I would like to speculate it's because that big limitation of range, he saw more as that strength to be able to lean into to get these just unique voicings for being able to play melodies and through these sequences. And it really makes it sound different than any other instrument, especially different than the guitar. And so that's kind of the third big strength to playing the ukulele over the guitar, what this instrument has that the guitar kind of lacks. And that is that campanella style, being able to play melody notes over multiple strings to get that continued resonance. And so those are the three biggest reasons I thought of for why you, know, you would want to play the ukulele over the guitar, the big strengths that it has over its big brother, right? And what those three things are, are four fingers, four strings, right? Being able to play chords in ways where every single string can be covered by a different finger, allowing you to move just one finger at a time sometimes, not worrying about muting any strings or barring. You can actually have everything covered individually. The second strength we talked about is how it's a strummer's dream. Being able to incorporate the high G string as this sort of ghost note gives you this nice drone to tie all the other sounds together. And it's what players like Jake Shimabukuro use to create that incredible sound with like the wobbling guitar gently we use. Which if you want more about that breakdown, check out the live lesson link below. A couple months ago we did that. That was super fun. But that's the strummer's dream aspect, that ghost note technique using that high G. And the third thing there, the campanella effect. Being able to play melody notes over all four strings to create these runs that allow them to ring into each other and almost sound like there's more than one instrument playing. Much like a harp being played instead of the linear. That being more this wide different sort of sound. Now it's funny because all of these strengths are stemming from weaknesses. And it's almost just looking at it with a different perspective, right? The fact that it only has four strings means that it objectively has less range than the guitar. So that strength of being able to fret any number of strings is also a weakness because you don't have as much range to fret. And then the other two strengths, the strumming and the campanella are really a product of the tuning of the ukulele using this kind of unique high G. And because of that, it's also a limitation compared to the guitar that we don't have the range. The ukulele is a, a two octave and change, a third. And that's not much range at all. In fact, a guitar is about that range on its open strings. So, you know, a guitar has to fret what, you know, fret the seventh fret on the E string and it's already got the entire range. And most guitars have what, 22 plus frets. So these weaknesses to the ukulele, if you look at them through a different light, like we have here today, you can see that they can be strengths too. And the reality is not one instrument is better than the other. It's just a matter of preference and trying different things to create different sounds. So I wonder what your reasons, though, why you might like the ukulele more than the guitar, what you think it can do better. So I'm going to start looking in the chat now for anyone that's here live. We got a couple messages, too, on Rock Class 101 about uh, this topic. Um, and so I'm going to actually answer those first. So if you're watching this as a recording, every month we do a live stream here on Rock Class 101. And it's a different topic each time. And if you're unable to make the time because it's at noon Pacific on a Tuesday afternoon, uh, feel free to leave your comment in the forum and I'll be sure to answer it. And we have the Bumble Bard, what a fantastic screen name, left a comment of, I'm so excited for this topic. I shan't be able to attend the lesson live, but I do have questions, probably too many. Uh, first question, an elitist guitar player might point out the limited range of the ukulele compared to the guitar. How do you address that without getting into a literal instrument sword fight? So I answered that a little bit, but it, you know, it's really looking at that weakness and that limitation and trying to spin it. How can it actually be a strength? 
the limitation is what gives you that unique tuning, which facilitates Campanella and high G ghost note based drumming stuff. So you can really use that to your advantage. And if you know, you're playing low G and you feel a little left out, just remember the four fingers to four strings. Guitarists really wish they could do that. <laughs> they really wish that they could play all the strings at the same time and be able to fret them in different places. And they can't because the instrument just doesn't work that way. Six strings, four fingers, right? Um, the next question there was, does it ever make sense if you really like a guitar arrangement to try to transpose it to an ook? Or is it always better to start from scratch and create a new arrangement of that song for the ukulele? I think uh, it's more the second. You know, they are different instruments. Um, you can sometimes start with the guitar arrangement and start to look at it, but know that it is going to be cropped quite a bit. You know, it's much better to actually get the arrangement from the get-go for the ukulele. Now, if you're playing a low G ukulele and the guitar arrangement you're playing is really quite simple and only uses like the D, G, B, E strings, the kind of the bottom four closest to the ground, then you can just take that guitar arrangement and start playing it on the ukulele, and that's totally fine. Um, but generally speaking, it sounds best when they start from the ground up for the ukulele. Uh, next question. If an ukulele player and a guitar player fall in love, how much would it be like the West Side Story? I don't know. I think we'll have to ask Maria about that. Is that, is that West Side Story? I'm terrible with this, but great question. Love it. Um, it says, I really look forward to watching the lesson back later, but also sorry. Nothing to apologize for. Fantastic questions. So it's it's pretty pretty awesome. So I'm looking now in the chat uh, here on YouTube, and Andy says that's really interesting. I would say that portability is not trivial either. No, it's not. And honestly, the only reason I didn't focus on the portability was because it's so obvious, right? I mean, duh. Why wouldn't you look look at the size of this? It's it's nothing comparatively, right? It's so easy to take places. And again, this is a tenor ukulele. I've got a soprano here too that my son likes to, to play. Look how small this is. I can fit this in my luggage, literally like put it in the bag. You can't do that with a guitar. I have seen some guitars that kind of fold up, which are kind of neat, you know, but that's a lot of work to go for, for bringing your instrument with you. And so the ukulele's portability is absolutely not trivial. And, you know, I've had a number of students who have gone backpacking or something else with the ukulele and, you know, strap it to their backpack and go. Usually they'll be playing one, you know, like an outdoor ukulele or something made of like a polycarbonate, something really durable. And uh, with the nylon strings too, you know, it's it's weather resistant. I've actually paddled a, a kayak with a, this ukulele. So uh, yeah, being able to strap it on your backpack and go on a 50 mile hike and still be able to make music is something that you know, guitar players can only do if they're going to ha also have a very sore back. <laughs> so definitely not something small. And he also says, and it's certainly nice to be able to strum some songs right from your first lesson. But I soon realized that playing the ukulele is, a, well, a lifelong journey. And I totally agree. You know, it, it's funny because some people get upset when people say the ukulele is easy. And I get where that being upset can come from, because to master the ukulele is just as difficult uh, to master the guitar, for instance. And there's a reason why there are people who are at the absolute top of their games who do this, like Jake Shimabukuro and Tommy Emanuel, who I mentioned earlier in this session. Um, however, I like to picture it like as a, as, a, as a ramp, like a little graph, right? So learning the guitar, I see it as being a graph that looks like this, it goes like that. There's this big hump to start with it and this hump is learning your first few chords on the guitar getting those fingers comfortable to fret and you know fit in those places the steel strings shredding up people's fingers when they're first learning to play right it's difficult the guitar has i i would be willing to bet money that the guitar leads the the world for most uh most tried and given up instrument in the world more i bet more people have picked up the guitar and given up the guitar than any other instrument in the world, right? It's because it's got kind of an initial plateau. And once you overcome that plateau, it's relatively smooth sailing, right? Like you can start to learn things and get comfortable, but that initial plateau takes some time. The ukulele doesn't have that plateau. It kind of starts, you know, smooth and just goes straight up. And that's because you can start learning it with one finger. In fact, that's a lesson I do all the time is, Teach someone how to play a song with literally just one finger. Anybody can do it. Now, to play the ukulele as proficiently as someone like Jake Shimabukuro would take just as much time to learn as 
learning to play the guitar as prof proficiently as someone like Tommy Emmanuel, right? It's, it's the same level of difficulty and complexity at those high of levels. But to start, the ukulele is really simple. I love that about it. It's a very simple instrument to pick up and start learning. Um, that's why I play it. I tried guitar and I gave up when I was in like, I don't know, sixth grade or something. <laughs> it was early on. I did have to learn some guitar um, for college, actually. I took a a music theory for guitar class and I wanted to take it with my ukulele, but the teacher said, you have to take it with guitar first. So I went and I bought a, a baby tailor, a, kind of a smaller guitar, and I learned it just for that class. Um, I passed the class and then I sold the guitar, I think to my brother or something like that, and took it again with ukulele and was so excited to be back home. The guitar has some cool strengths to it, but there's something about the ukulele that just draws me back. And these things that we're talking about right now, I'm trying to be more objective, right? The ability to do campanella and strumming and things like that is objectively a little bit better than on the ukulele than it is the guitar, just because of the tuning. But subjectively speaking, I like the tone of the ukulele more. It's a warmer sort of sound. In fact, Jake Shimokuro has a great quote on it, um, which I'm going to paraphrase, basically saying nobody can strum an ukulele and frown because it's, you know, the same sort of frequency as children laughing. You know, an ukulele, the notes, it's the same sort of frequency as kids. And that also could explain why some people don't like the ukulele, right? But for me, you know, I think of kids laughing whenever I play the ukulele and how can you not smile with that, right? So that's that's my subjective reason for liking it more to go along with some of the others. Uh, Stephanie says, I also tried to learn guitar as a kid and it didn't stick. The uke feels less intimidating to start playing, which is a big plus. Absolutely. It's easier to start and easier to keep going with it too. You know, the best habits are the ones you keep, right? And so it's, yeah, it's making sure that you can start playing, enjoying that process and kind of going through. Um, now, if you're watching this right now live and you want your question answered, be sure to comment right now with it uh, as we're wrapping up here. I'm going to take another look at the forums just to make sure there's no other questions that might be uh, asked. And uh, we'll kind of go from this. But Andy says, apologize. Apologies for signing off early, but I have to drive my wife to work. Thanks for this. Thank you so much for coming, Andy. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to more of these at this sort of time. Doesn't look like there's any other comments right now, which is totally fine. Again, if you're watching this as a recording, feel free to leave your comments in the message boards on Rock Class 101, which I'll just refresh real quick. There we go. doesn't look like any new questions. Uh, Ron does have a question of, so why high G and not low G? So we actually, we did a live lesson on this a while ago um, that just talked about why high G is better or different, be difference a better word um, than low G and kind of why I prefer high G over low G. And the big thing that we talked about here today are going to be, you know, the Campanella style playing and the ghost note playing. So that finger picking style and that strumming style are very different on a high G ukulele than a low G and much more different on a high G ukulele than a guitar. Um, and so that's where some of that came from. So turning some of your weaknesses into strengths is why high G and not low G, but check out that video here on Rock Class for more on that uh, high G, not low G. I'm sure we'll link it down below too as you go through. But thank you guys so much for attending this live lesson. Again, we're doing live lessons now the second Tuesday every month at noon Pacific time. So I hope to see you here. If you're unable to make it, again, feel free to leave a comment in the message boards. And I appreciate all of your guys' support, everything else. Again, my name is Matt Dahlberg, and it's been a joy talking to you about ukuleles versus guitars. And I'll see you guys next time on the next live stream. Thanks so much. See you later.